get you down Things are moving fast Just hold on tight, you last Keep your self-respect Keep your Never mind your fears Cause brighter days will soon be here Take it from me Someday we'll all be free I just want to take this time to reflect all the lives that have been lost this year and the years before to bless all the families that have lost their family members. Be free. Brothers and sisters, we call this March today in July to coincide with the 48th anniversary of the Newark Rebellion. We don't call it a riot. It wasn't a riot. It was a rebellion against oppression. And there are black elected everythings in Newark today because of the people who stood up during the 1967 rebellion. And one of those people that was one of the leaders of the black power movement, the father of the black arts movement. We stand here today in his memory, the great writer and activist, Amiri Baraka. He is no longer with us, but there is another champion who is with us today and that is one who was by his side leading the movement, leading the Committee for a Unified Newark. I welcome to the podium the mother of the mayor of the city of Newark and the mother of the people's movement, Sister Amina Baraka. Give her a big hand. Power to the people. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about Barb Marley too. Get up, stand up, stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up, 
Don't give up the fight. That's right. This is not a poem. This is a call for justice. I am here for the future of our children. I am here for the right of education, public education, not charters, public education. We want local control. I'm here for health care. I'm here for food, clothing, and shelter for all. I am here to recruit allies for justice. Black, Latin, Asian, white. I am here for the people to unite. I am here to make sure that we win this fight. I am here to salute the people's war for justice. I am here to salute the veterans and there are many of us out here. I am here because the people's war matters. Black lives are matter, people's lives matter. I don't know who came up with the slogan, black power matters. No, black lives matter. We've had black power and it turned on us. We want black, Latin, Asian, white, but we want to make sure that black people have their rights. political prisoners. I am here to say that we go into those prisons and stop them from turning them into recruit offices for gangs. I'm here to say that we must go in there and make sure these prisoners have education, they have food, I mean good food, they get paid for their labor, and that they have classes classes, they have entertainment, poetry. We did it in the 60s and we can do it now. They stopped it because the prisons have become a recruiting gang. For, look what happened, how those prisons broke out and come to find out the correction officers and what have you was involved in it. We need to turn it into rehabilitation centers. Reform schools. You're not supposed to go to prison it to become a gang member. You're supposed to go to prison to get reformed. And I am here against the death penalty, by the way. And I am here again to salute all you veterans out here. I've been marching for many, many years and I see many, many faces out here. And I want to say to you, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I salute our veterans. They are prisoners of war, and we are veterans of a war. Thank you. But right now, we're gonna hear from the families of those who were murdered by the police. Some of their cases are still active, some of their cases are active in the streets. There are no inactive cases. A case, is a, a case is active as long as you're fighting for justice in that case. But the first person I want to bring forward is the mother of Abdul Kamal, who was killed by Irvington police, fired upon 15 times, hit 10 times. Like Amadou Diallo, the only thing he had in his hand was a cell phone. Please welcome, in the strongest possible way, Michelle Kamal, the mother of Abdul Kamal. Thank you, Chairman Ham. First, I want to say I want to give all honor and praise to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My family who supports me and who's always there with me, my pop family, and my friends and all of you that has come out today. You know, my heart is troubled because we're here in Essex County. We're here at the courthouse. But Chairman is the only person, only person that mentioned our children's names. We have to stop letting other people come before us. Our children are here in New Jersey, in Essex County. But we continue to talk about everybody but our children. 
Our children's names are not in the news. Our children's videos are not being shown. There's no group that invite us as a group of mothers. In this organization, we have three mothers that lost their sons to police killing. Three, that's insane. My son was murdered 11, November the 11th, 2013, around two o'clock in the morning in Irvington. My son was my only son, he was my youngest child. I have three children, two daughters and a son. And he's gonna always be my son. He's not a was, he's a is. He is my son. The police, they cannot take the joy nor the peace away from me. That was given to me by God. No one's gonna take that from me. And we're gonna stand up for our children in New Jersey. Abdul Kamal, Kashad Ashford, and Jamal Reed. Those are our children, but no one talks about our children. But we're going to talk about them. We're going to make sure no one forgets. So that's why we're here today. And we thank all of you for coming out today. We thank you so much for coming out today. I don't want what happened to the three of us to happen to you. So people, please get involved in organizations that are actually doing something good. Please get involved because it can happen to you. We never thought we would get a call that our sons are never coming home, that they would never see their children or their wives. Our children have fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, and they all miss them. Normally I'm fine, but sometimes we have a bad day. November the 11th would be two years and it's like it just happened. So I thank all those that support me. I truly do. And I thank you all for coming out. Please, please get involved. Thank you. And we call upon the U.S. Attorney whose office we will be marching to, Paul Fishman to immediately launch an official investigation into the death of Abdul Kamal. Those who killed him must be held accountable. They cannot walk away from this. The next mother I want to call upon, I'm gonna call the mother and the grandmother, Regina Ashford and Cecile Hepburn, the family of Kashad Ashford. Welcome them, please, in the strongest possible way. Hello, my name is Regina Ashford. Murdered. 
My son was unconscious when they put nine bullets in his head. And I think the cops is responsible for that. Hi, Gina is a little emotional. I'm Cecile Hepburn, Kashad's grandmother. They spilled my blood. They took my grandson. And I've got no answers. I don't know who killed him. I don't know why they killed him. All I can go is on what I read in the newspaper. Well, he deserves justice, and this family deserves answers. It's been nine months, and we have no idea what happened to him. All we've done was buried him. They even took him to the hospital dead, which held his body for four hours. Cut him open. For what? If you got nine bullets in your head, you sure don't need an autopsy. A blind man know what happened to you. So today we stand here, and we ask, Everyone, as people, people, if we must come together to stop this killing of our children, our seniors, our disabled, our babies, they're all dying. And with us, we've got to take a stand. Someone has got to stop the violence, the killing on our children and on people. I thank you, and I'm glad to see so many of us out here in support to stop Paula Kelly, but we have got to take a stand, because I am not going to stop until someone tells me what happened to my grandson. It's here for the Ashton family. Give them some support. Show them some love. Rome Reed family here. Come on up here, sister. In Bridgeton, New Jersey, y'all seen the video. How many of y'all seen the video of what happened to Jerome? That video went viral. He was getting out of the car. He had his hands open and raised. He had nothing in his hand. You know, Amadou Diallo had a wallet. Abdul Kamal had a cell phone. Jerome didn't have anything in his hand and he was shot dead in the street. Let's welcome in the strongest possible way his mother and his father, his brother and sister and family. Oh wow, it is beautiful to see so many people out here today. I am so happy. My heart is pounding so fast and so hard. I miss my baby. Daron was my middle son. This is my oldest son. This is my baby. This is Dwayne. This is Sean. This is my niece. We miss Jerome. Jerome didn't have to die the way, they, the way he died. Bridgeton shouldn't, Bridgeton's police officers didn't have to open fire on him like that. It was only two officers. Officer Worley and Officer Dave. I would like to see them prosecuted to the fullest, but right now they're not um, doing anything. It's been six months since they uh, done anything. He, he died December the 30th, 2014 at 11-something that evening. I saw him Christmas Day along with my grandson. This is my grandson and my son on my chest. Uh, my grandbaby was only three months old when he died, when his father died. Now he has no father, and I want justice. I want justice for my son. I want justice for my grandson. Because my grandson's gonna grow up not knowing his grandfather. And I hope to God that I lived long enough to see my grandson get justice. Woo. Okay. Uh, my name is Munir Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Power to the people. Power to the people. I, we had the Reed family. We did not prepare a speech, but we come here as a family. We are not biologically related. But somehow we are, through God. You understand? 
Subhanallah wa ta'ala. He said, Ya Abadullah, you got to fear God. You understand? Keep God in your heart. You know? And a lot of us going, because we never prepared to be up here for this type of situation. Expecting that our children, male or female, to be killed in this type of in situation. But now that we are here, we try to deal with this situation as best we can. We try to give understanding to other families because this situation must stop. It cannot long ago in this day and age when we're our own families, our grandparents used to tell us about stuff like this, lynching and killing and all this stuff. And here it is, we're young and another millennium going through the same thing. We cannot have this in this society when we as taxpayers pay these people to protect us. We cannot have this type of thing going on because if we can't rely on them to protect us, who going to protect us then? Ourselves? So I don't want to take up too much of your time here. But I'm glad to see all the people that showed up here and give the support to each other, to all these families out here. You know, because I cannot tell you so much what a family feels of going through unless you've been through it yourself. But we don't want you to go through this here. It is enough. It is draining. It's a heartache on families, you know. But if we stand together, we can get results. Things can change, because the change is going to come. Oh, yes it is, the change is going to come. So I thank y'all for your support, from the Reed family, all the families. You know, and, and, and we, we feel your love that's going out to us, but at the same time, we give that love back to you, because you're showing support for us. You're standing by us. You didn't have to be here, but you're here. And we love you. We love you back for that. Thank y'all very much. Power to the people. Abdul. 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 Jerome. 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 Kashad. 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 I see mass action. Everybody from Boston, holla. Everybody from New York, holla. Everybody from Philadelphia, holla. Everybody from Jersey, holla. Everybody from everywhere else, holla. Brothers and sisters, the People's Organization for Progress was created in 1983. One of our early cases in which we were involved playing a support role was that of Philip Pinnell. How many remember Philip Pinnell? Philip Pinnell, 16 years old, shot in the back, and according to the regional medical examiner, was shot in the back while he was on his knees. To my surprise, the mother and sister of Philip Pinnell, who was killed in 1990, they are here with us today. Walk, welcome them in the strongest possible way, the Pinnell family. Where's the mother and the sister of Philip Pinnell? In 1990, my son was shot in the back with his arms in the air, with his hands in the air. And his partner said, spat, was the, the police officer shot him in the back. Blanco said if he hadn't shot him, he would have. So that's telling me he would never had a chance in life. And this has been 25 years ago that this happens. Every day, I hear of some young man been shot it just keep on, keep on coming up in my, just bringing up memories. You could never go on with your life like that. There's no way. 
And just yesterday I was in a video when this first happened 25 years ago. And that back brought back all the memories and pain. Please, people, keep on marches for justice. No matter how many years it's been, it's gonna keep on, keep on happening to us. Please, please, support the parents that lost all of their children, that lost the young men. Please, thank you. I just wanted to say that um, I thank everyone for coming out. Um, like my mom said, it's hard to forget it's been 25 years since my brother was murdered, shot in the back with his hands up, high in the air. Um, as far as us being out here, thinking that we're gonna get justice and ways of marching, we have to, like Mr. Ham said, we have to do, create like a radical movement, you know, and let, the, let it be known that we're not just gonna do this. If we're gonna rally, let's rally in front of the politicians' homes. Let's go to D.C. and rally in front of the White House. Yeah. And if we All have right. to do it every day, then that's, and if, if that's what it takes, then that's what we're going to do. Because 25 years to see Sandra Bland, Mike Brown, Eric Garner, and all the other countless cases, I mean, it's mind-boggling. I, I sit in front of the television all the time just crying in tears, and I, and I have no more tears to shed. That's why I'm here today. I was 13 when my brother was murdered. I'm 38 years old and I'm still out here marching. So like my mom said, I thank all of you again and we must not give up. Power to the people. Thank you. Give them a big hand. The Pinnell family, they are with us today. We have folks here, mothers here not only from New Jersey, but from other states. And one of those who've been fighting harder than almost anyone I know is here from Mother's Cry for Justice. And that's Sister Juanita Young. Let's give a big welcome. Give a big welcome, Juanita Young. see so many, many people out here today. For the past 15 years I've been out here trying to fight for justice for my son Malcolm Ferguson when he was murdered March 1st of 2000. Since the murder of my son I have met so many families and so many mothers and, and, and just so many good people. I met Larry when my son was first murdered. He was one of the people that came out to Southern the Valley. And I still see he's out here supporting the families. So you gotta give it to him because he stands for what he knows and believes in. I, I have to tell you, Larry, that is so good. That is so good. But my son Malcolm was murdered March 1st of 2000 in the Bronx. The cop who murdered my son admitted he murdered my son for no reason. The DA refused to um, to take his case to a grand jury. So we end up taking his case to civil court to hear this low life say he murdered my son for no reason. But yet he walked out that courtroom. How can you admit to murdering somebody and not be charged? So I'm still right now have learned new information on I'm gonna take another step to, to try to get this cop Lewis Rivera in the Bronx for the murder of my son. But as a mother, and having to live the pain we live in such, you know, that you go to the doctor, they give you medicine to ease or take that pain away. There's not a medicine, nothing can take the pain that we live in on a regular basis. We give birth to these kids to watch them grow up and have a good life. Not to see somebody come and make us live in the pain that we live in. And then to hear somebody come and tell you, Oh, your son shouldn't have went for the gun, what? Show me the fingerprint. Oh, but the cop admitted he murdered my son for no reason. Oh, but Abba Zuziamo had a, had a wallet. What was his crime? Ayanna Jones in Detroit was asleep, laying on the couch. What did Sharpton say? Why was she sleep on the couch? Come on. I mean, I go, I do this on a national level, speaking to so many families. 
But the problem we having, we allowing the same people to come back in the office. That's why we not getting nowhere. The only person, the only people that stand up for us. Charles Barron, hey, that's my man. Yeah. Oh yes, Cornel West. Hey, they stand for what they believe in. Hey. To see us come out here and stand up, stop putting them people that don't believe in justice. They just believe in making the name. And if you stop putting them back in office and you see what position we in right now, that next election say, no way, we don't need you. We tired of burying our kids. We tired of not being able to sleep at night without picking up the phone or going out the door and the cop attacking us. Tell the cops we don't need you. Let the community protect their own community. Yeah.